Well, good morning, guys. Another fine day at the sawmill shed where the sun has come out to say hello. It's a welcome change for the drab, gloomy, cloudy weather we've been having lately. The snow, the sleet, the rain, the wind. Anyways, that's our weather update for today. We've already started milling our strapping for the roof because uh, we need some uh, kind of like to tie all our rafters together. Grant, my trusted friend, is here. We're gonna we're, we're doing gable ends. Gable ends. The rest of the roof. Gable ends. The rest of the roof. That's the technical term for the building. The rest of the roof. We're gonna do that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we we did this log here this morning because we need we need strapping. And uh, I affectionately introduced the cant hook to my face. And uh, yeah, I think I feel slightly concussed. I don't know if you can tell that I smashed my head with a piece of wood this morning already. So we're no, we're uh, we're going well. But on the bright side, everything started and ran excellent. So, anyways, I've had my coffee. Let's get uh, nailing up some gable ends. See if anything gets worse. If you're wondering how you punch yourself in the head with a can, what I was doing was I had the can like this. I'm trying to remember it myself. I'm a little, little still shocked that I actually hit myself. And I was looking to see how far I was over, and this little tooth flicked over and hit me in the head. How insulting is that? I'm your friend, can't. Don't do that to me. Anyways, be careful you don't hit yourself in the head with a can. It doesn't, it's not fun. All right, we got the gable end on. We've uh, added blocks equally spaced up there. We've got four blocks. And uh, the reason why we toenail them is because it's actually stronger than uh, going through the backside and just kind of a like straight nail in there. So we're putting six nails per front and then three on the fascia board. That is going to be my finished fascia board because again, at the end of the day, this is a sawmill shed and I like the look of wood. So that's what, uh, that's the finished look. As you can see, our miters fit tight at the top. This thing's gonna last forever, right Grant? Forever. Forever, ever. All right, we just gotta do the other side. It only took us about 20 minutes to do that. No big deal once you have everything cut and uh, it really finishes it off nice. It's gonna have the, uh, the illusion of like a church, kind of, sort of. And then there's another roof that's gonna go down that way. And we're gonna have, what's that called? What's that called when you can see both roofs? A lean-to roof on top, but there's another, like you can see the, you, you'll see the triangle. Well, you know what? Maybe they can tell us what, what uh, put it down in the comments. What what it means when there's like a, a triangle and then another triangle over here. Grant says Dutch gable. I have no idea what it is. I'm not 100% on that. But I, we're not gonna, you know, take you to court on that. Grant's theory is his rattling around. It's, it is early in the morning, even though it's very bright. Dutch gable, so whatever your thoughts are on that, send her down below. We're gonna carry on on the other side, although it's backlit, I can't film there. And then we're gonna carry on with strapping. All I'm doing here is finding the roof pitch based off the degrees I've calculated. So I'm using the speed square like a protractor to get the degrees. And then you put the framing square up against it. And you're able to find what the roof pitch is off the framing square. Cool. So it's a four and a quarter, 12 roof pitch. These are just uh, <coughs> guides. So once it's... Uh, Set, you can duplicate Set, it all you your can, measurements. You can duplicate it without having to line up the marks every time. Well, the other day we had a minor setback. I uh, made a bunch of this stuff I had laying around. It's a, a two by 10 and uh, I ended up doing a scarf joint on the, uh, on the wood because I was gonna make the roof rafters out of that. And uh, as it turns out, I didn't factor in the, uh, the actual scarf joint. So I lost a bunch of dimension there so I made a whole bunch of two short wood that could be used for something else but I ended up spending the rest of the afternoon fixing my mistake by harvesting some more pine trees so there you go we got the uh, this is a pine it's pretty fair size dimension and it's uh, 16 feet long and that should give us enough material I've got I got a number of them there and there and there so that should give us enough i just got to mill these guys up 
it's a good thing that uh, there is a sawmill because otherwise this is uh, if you had to buy that much material you're talking some big bucks there's another one over here I just got to throw it on the mill so that's where we're at now you can see you can see our top we got our strapping on it's shaping up pretty good that was all mill that's one by one by four and our gable ends are on and our we got our beam set and our top plate on we just got to extend our roof rafters and then we've got our collar ties that are going to go up there it's going to give us a nice spot if you guys are wondering why i did not just add a center peak right in the middle and then go from both sides is because i had a bunch of seven foot wood that i wanted to use so that's why we got the peak also i like the look of it it looks very very spacious directly under the mill so that's why i did that <laughs> Quite a Six. few. Six. Six. Of that. All right. After that unfortunate mismeasure, we've uh, back to where we started with a whole bunch of wood. We ended up using about three logs. It took us in total about an hour, actually three hours in total, including dropping the tree, delimbing it, dragging it to the mill, putting it on the mill, and then milling it up. We ended up getting 26 two by sixes, 16 feet long, out of three trees now we were able to get a whole bunch out of the third log because we were able to actually cut it essentially in half after we squared it up and then we every time we milled it we got two two by sixes because we were about 11 and a half inches total in in diameter between the log and then uh, we ended up getting double the amount of the other two so if we had if we had two rather large logs we would have ended up with 24 two by sixes 16 feet long so the bigger the dimension lumber the more options you have the smaller the tree you have the uh, obviously the less options you can uh, you can do but they, nothing really goes to waste because you can actually cut smaller dimensional wood as you go as you get to the center of the log and then anything that you don't use from there you can use as firewood to heat your home so there's like really no waste when it comes to milling your own wood In order to set our back roof, we ended up using a lot of 15 foot two by sixes. We started from one end, nailing up the ridge, and then at the back, we added a couple more nails and we worked our way from the back to the front, going one at a time in order to complete our overhang roof. What do you think, Don? Looks good. Doesn't it look good? Looks very good. Looks big. <clears throat> I like it. Add some blocking. We got some blocking and some strapping, and we're all set. Well, good morning, guys. Next day, we're up here. Well, I'm half in the roof, half not in the roof. We've got the roof all built out all we need to do is strapping now and uh grant was mentioning something about the uh the added bonus of this roof is it's almost at the perfect angle to accept solar panels so south facing eventually you know these trees are going to either a uh you know be fall down or they're gonna die of natural causes so when that occurs this is an optimal angle for solar panels which is a really an added bonus we didn't actually plan for that but it is long you know gently sloping and perfect angle but uh, as you can see this uh you know a couple days ago was a tree and now it is a roof which is pretty cool and the people out there are going to say well you can't build with wet wood i don't believe that as long as you brace it properly like this is all going to be strapped by one inch by four inch pine again it's all going to be nailed in and and uh anytime i've ever taken apart like an old barn or anything those were all built with wet wood and if you try to take a nail out of a wet piece of wood that is dried 
in place, you can't get the nail out. The nail breaks off. It is crazy strong once it dries. Now, it does do the funky chicken sometimes, meaning it does twist and stuff. So if you properly support it, it tends to, uh, you know, stay in place. And at the end of the day, this is a, a, a basically a large tent to hold the sawmill. So I think, you know, anything that does occur, you just throw another board on the, or another log on the sawmill and you mill up another board and you replace it if it does something that terrible. We've got, uh, we've got some stuff to do. You know what, the rain is coming today actually later on today so we're gonna look see if we can get everything kind of buttoned up the roof structure in place and uh, I've got a, uh, a stockpile of roofing material that I'm going to look through because I hope I have enough steel to uh, to cover this thing I'm like my budget on this thing is nothing so uh, I'm I'm there for basically a box of nails I'm at like 20 30 dollars now for a box of nails uh, and that's about it. So everything else is uh, is basically from the land or found material. So I'm, I'm doing pretty good so far, I think. And uh, well, we're going to continue. So anyway. Hey Grant, you're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I am. <laughs> got some lunch for today too. Sweet, you got lunch? I do. That's awesome. We're going to get started. You know how warm it is today? We almost like it's like a two t-shirt day, not it even is. a sweater day. It's Canadian summer. Canadian summer. The first Canadian summer. Yeah. Cool. You got to, did you bring me a coffee? Oh. <laughs> Just gotta sort some chainsaw problems out. We gotta cut the beam a little bit because the uh, overhang rafter that we're gonna add to it is touching the beam. So we're just gonna give it a little trim and it should fit really good. <laughs> I think we're camping. Yeah. We got, uh, what's this? Hash brown powder. We got hash brown, this is not breakfast. I thought those were breakfast only meals. No. No, anytime, anytime we got some hash browns and we got some burgers. Those are the thickest burgers I think I've ever seen. And uh, the secret weapon, I got some original bacon. This is, uh, does bacon ever go bad? Yeah. No? Okay. Cause this is uh, two year old I think now, or one, one and a half. That's, okay. that's our homegrown bacon. As you guys may know, I'm not the greatest cook. So anytime anybody offers to cook, I say, yeah, Grant is a, an exceptional cook. I, I, one would say much better than I am. Yeah. So we're doing the old, uh, well, doing all the old sawhorse burgers. No McDonald's here. No McDonald's. Well, I think we've eaten too much McDonald's over the last little while. I think the wife said she's coming out. She's coming out to visit. She wants to see progress because uh, she loves progress. And uh, I think she's bringing us a little bit of a snack. So we're going to... Hopefully those will arrive. And Don's coming a little bit later on today. He shows up around noon. So, uh, and then we're gonna have, uh, we'll have some bacon for him, cause he loves bacon. We, we put our bacon in the frying pan that's frozen. And we added water for uh, two reasons. One, to uh, thaw it out. And the second reason is, especially on thick bacon like this, uh, you want to uh, get the bacon, like the meat, and a little bit of the fat rendered down before it actually starts frying. So uh, by putting it in water, it, it boils it a little bit. Nice. Cooks the meat, renders it down, and you actually get crispier bacon doing it that way. So crispier bacon with water. Who would have thought? A little bit of fat on there. Just a little. <laughs> Those were big pigs. They were big pigs. So. Oh yeah. Hey look who's here. It's Rachel. Did you get all done up to come out here? No. I'm so pretty. Why are you so pretty? They think you're pretty. They think you're pretty. I'm, I'm sorry. You brought us a treat. I did. What is that? They are uh, banana chocolate chip muffins with icing. I don't think they can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard to be on camera. It's just got to talk louder, that's all. Uh, they are banana chocolate chip muffins with icing. I'm kidding. They probably heard you. I would just mm, bug you. No thanks. What, uh, what do you think of the shed? It's, uh, it's, it's a monster. It's a little bigger than... It's always... You just told me it was just going to cover the sawmill. It does technically cover the sawmill. What's the other huge bit for? That covers the sawmill too. This is the sawmill. What's over there? Yeah, maybe another saw. I don't know. Maybe we need a, like a sister sawmills. Sister sawmill. Brother sawmills. Maybe like one sawmill to cut one length and the, I don't know. I don't know. It's future consideration. Um, 
it's the same amount of work. Well, it's not the same amount of work to build a small shed as to build a big shed, but it's not much more work to build a bigger shed than it does a small shed. It's huge. Yeah, I know. That's what they all say. Is that an eye roll? <laughs> this is our this is our little snack. You should go in for Don too, because Don's coming this afternoon. Yeah, there's always always enough for Don. There's That's always right. enough for Don. All right, awesome. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for stopping by. You're welcome. You, I always you, like to bring you treats. You want to help? No. Come on. We gotta put strapping up. That's not my job. Oh, okay. All right, well, we'll leave it at that. Rachel, did you know that if your bacon is frozen or if you're cooking bacon, if you add water to the pan, it does something to the bacon that it, I don't know, it renders the something and... <clears throat> it renders it and cooks the meat. Oh. And then... Actually makes it crispier. <clears throat> and then when you go to like, when the water's gone, when, you, when you're frying it, it makes the bacon crispier, especially on the thick bacon like that. That'll be good, delicious. Are you gonna bring some home for me? <laughs> I might. I might. Depends. Don, eat it all? Don's coming, so he might like. Don's just coming for a snack at the end. So he, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I, I might bring you some. See if there's any left. This is old. Old. This is old bacon. So it is we'll old see. Bacon. We don't know how how old it is. It smells good. Uh, we we know exactly how old it is, but I don't remember. A year and a half. It's mm. slightly over a year old. So just getting there. Mm. Yeah, Almost separated. Almost. Don, you're just in time for bacon. Yeah, it's too bad I've eaten already, so. That's okay, that's, I told, I was saying that you're gonna have like bacon snack. It's like bacon dessert. And there's also, Rachel brought uh, little muffins. So we got snacks and desserts and bacon. N never too full for bacon. These are really game changers when it comes to, uh, you know, the, uh, the next level lunch on site. It's not like, you know, brown bag in it. This is, uh, you can get these stoves. Cabela Bass Pro Shops. This is a Coleman stove. It's got the two burners. And uh, let's take this little one pound propane tanks. But they're uh, super awesome, especially when you want a warm lunch remotely. Nice and toasty. <laughs> Alright, it's burger time. You take you haven't taken a bite yet. Not yet. Oh yeah. Oh, see, we're both at the same time. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Deep frying potato and bacon. It's got like oh, mostly my. bacon in it. It's probably the healthiest thing I've eaten today. It's got lots of seeds in it. It's a multi-grain Chrysler. Multi-grain Chrysler. Geyser. Chrysler. It's a multi-grain Chrysler bun. Nothing beats cooking outside on a grill after you've been like basically eating sawdust all day. You can make yourself like a real sort of food, nice and hot. You guys, guys get yourself a Coleman grill. If you're working on site, especially if you're framing or like, even if you're, you know what? Like anybody can go out in the parking lot and cook your own meal. Why not? Get yourself a Coleman grill. Cabela's Bass Pro Shops got them. Don actually, who was shy, doesn't want to eat on camera. He's going to eat a bunch of bacon later. He's gonna be snacking on it. Cause we're just gonna leave it there, I think. This yeah. is like our bacon snack. We almost forgot the uh, the hash brown patties fried, deep fried basically in bacon fat. <laughs> oh my. While we're at it, we're gonna do a little bit of a cool tool time. This thing here is the last goo laser level. It's pretty cool. And uh, the reason why it's cool is cause a lot of this sawmill shed build, we couldn't have done without a laser cause we had no reference point. Well. We could have done it without a laser. We could have used a string or something. It wouldn't have been as accurate and it wouldn't have been, a, as, it wouldn't have been as quick. Oh yes, that's right. It would have taken a heck of a lot more time. So this little guy here comes with its own little case. It's got some rare earth magnets on the back of it. You can stick it on the thingamajigger and uh, you press the button and it shoots a, a laser crosshairs and you can lock it. So you can kind of like hang pictures up a stairwell. You can get a horizontal line or a 45. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it's 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 convenient, and the best part about it, it's Grant's now. Here you go, there you well, go. You can you. you can take that thing home. I, I can't believe you don't have a laser. Now I do. Now, well, now you do, but you didn't before. That's why I was like, you gotta hook the, you gotta hook your friends up, right? So Absolutely. there you go, last goo laser level. There's your little case. Thank and you. There's your box. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to pick your own up. It's uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's got the green laser, so you can see it in the daytime. Um, and it works really good at the nighttime. You can do like light shows and stuff in the forest. It's uh, it's excellent at that. But uh, yeah, check them out. 
and uh, Grant, enjoy your enjoy your laser level. I appreciate your help on this project, and uh, yeah, enjoy your laser. I'm sure you'll have everything straight and plumb and square and stuff. Oh yeah, piece of bacon. Look at that size of that. That's like a what a half. Inch. That's an inch. That's an inch size piece of bacon. I got bacon, a bacon banana chocolate chip muffin with icing on it. Oh. It's sweet. It's salty. It's delicious. I'm gonna die. I don't think we have to do any more work. Let's go have a nap under a tree or something. Yeah. Oh my. My compliments to the chef, the chef Rachel that uh, made these. These are these are freaking delicious. <laughs> All right, before we put the steel roof on, we probably want to deal with these dead branches behind me. The problem is, is they've kind of snapped off during a, uh, I think an ice storm or something. They're dangling above the roof. If the steel roof's on and they come down, they're going to really dent it. I'm sure the roof could probably take it, but I might as well deal with it now where they just kind of fall and we just get rid of them. So my plan is to scurry up the tree with a chainsaw and, uh, and cut them off. I don't know if that's a great idea, but... So as you can see, that would have been a lot of uh, debris on the metal roof. That branch has been bugging me for years. I just hadn't got up there and cut it off. So now that tree can recover. It was just like a snapped branch. Anyways, another little job done. We don't have a drill bit big enough to make our three quarter inch hole. So we're using a step bit. We got that thing from Princess Auto. And uh, normally they're not designed for half inch plate, but we've drilled probably four or five holes with this thing. It's doing really, really well. I'm, I'm rather impressed. Don, you don't weigh enough. You gotta, you gotta put some beef into that thing. You need some- I should have had that bacon. You should have had the bacon. Just show. <laughs> you can see it on the other side here. We got this all welded up and then we're mag <laughs> bolting it to the beam through the post. And we've got a giant washer and that's secured there, and that'll hold our post from racking from side to side. We've got some more stuff to put on to prevent the racking, but that's uh, the first start. We got another hole we gotta drill above there, and another bolt. I have a secret stash of steel roofing somewhere. I think it's here. Well, it's like the United Nations of Steel. We've got every single different color and profile. Although we don't have enough of any single one, so we're gonna make do when we got uh, some lemons, we're gonna make some lemonade. The idea is to make the front very presentable and there's gonna be a party at the back with all the different colors that I have. I've kind of been saving up all my odds and sods for a project that I can't actually see the back. In this project here, I can't see the back. So I'm just gonna throw it on the back and, and make do. And if the front doesn't look real pretty, I'll paint it in the summertime. But uh, I wanna make use of this steel. This stuff is crazy expensive if you have to buy it. So 
like I said, I've been collecting it for a little bit and I've got, I think I got enough pieces to do it all. Um, these are, these are like 15 foot five, so I can, I can make, I got four sheets of that stuff and then another one. So they're kind of mostly the same color. So that'll be the front. And then, uh, I've got multicolors for the back. I'll just kind of stitch it together like a quilt. People love quilts, don't they? Quilt roof. It's going to be awesome. Well, that wasn't terrible. We got her up there. And, uh, as you can see, it kind of like it fades into light when it's dark. Maybe it's compensating for the fact that that's kind of in the shade behind the tree. So we've got a dark type of steel at the front and then it goes to kind of a beige color and then it goes to like a white color. I don't mind that. It's kind of like, what do they call that when it's faded to a different color? I don't know. The girls pay lots of money for it in their hair. They could pay them lots of money for this stuff in the, uh, in the, uh, in the roofing industry. That's something. I think it's kind of cool. You know what? If it, if it really bugs me, at a later date, I could paint the whole thing. Spray the whole thing in the same color. But as it sits right now, I'm pretty pleased with that. We're just gonna work on the back side now. It's gonna be a little bit more of a patchwork piece. And uh, we'll see how far we get today. Cause the uh, sun's shining, I think there's rain tomorrow. So we're gonna get uh, as much as we can done. Cause we can work underneath, under cover, which is exciting. Exciting to get the roof up after this much time. That's how far we got so far. It looks, like we got about six feet or two lengths of roof that we can't seem to manage to get out of these little shorty pieces. So you got shorties, 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 bents. But I think I have a strategic reserve of steel roofing. And it's over here amongst the slides. Donna's digging. It's like, it's like gold. Mother load. Is there a mother load there? Wow. Something. There's some. What do we got here? Look at that's roof. Let's see what we got. There's the pine needles. It's like an archaeological dig. We're finally going to find the gold at Oak Island. That's definitely a roof panel. I don't think it's a full sheet though. We'll see. We'll see what's in there. We'll give Don another hour or so to dig this out. Look at that sheet, it's like 17 foot long. One shot. Look at that. Then we got some other steel here. Boom, that'll do. Nice. How's it look from down there, Grant? Looks like a roof. Excellent. That's what we were going for, roof looking. It's on a rafter, I'm sure put it as a mountain goat. Here. Got like two inches there. Got two inches. Two inches good enough. Like, what about the snow that's on the edge of the roof? Well, I'm not responsible for on top of the roof. All right, well, hopefully I get out of it. I should just climb the tree down. You could. She's close. She's She's got, uh, we got about an inch of growth there. Well, once again, I'm high above the chimney tops. We've got our roof on. And the good news is it cost me absolutely nothing. I was able to reuse all of the steel that I've acquired over the many years this has been in the plans for a really long time so i've been collecting for a really long time all of the steel and fortunately i i i forgot about the pile that was uh buried over there so that's actually where we got the blue from but we've got uh, a couple different colors we got black we got red we got green we got silver we got brown we got white we got baby blue yeah it's pretty exciting that we got the uh i got the lid on so now we can work on the inside out of the rain if it does rain or snow or hail or whatever it's going to do Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, join me on the next one.